everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review today. We're going to look at McFarland DC Multiverse Collector's Edition Outsiders Geoforce, both the regular and the platinum chase variants. I want to give a huge shout out to my boy Jimmy from Instagram for hooking me up with these. They're starting to hit the West Coast and trickle around the country, but they haven't hit my area yet. These are Target exclusive Collector's Edition figures. We have the regular release, which is in the orange and red outfit and the Platinum Chase variant, which is in the green and yellow outfit, which is his more original, classic look. Both these are from The Outsiders and the Batman and the Outsiders comics. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12+, plus, DC Multiverse Geoforce, McFarland Collector's Edition. Here he is in the package. We have what looks like three different faces two blast effects, collector's card, and display stand. One side of the package, Geoforce from the Outsiders. This is the 24th figure in the collector's edition subline. Other side says Geoforce. The back, here he is, posed up. And at the bottom, there's his barcode, if that helps. And then of course we have the Platinum Chase variant. Different color scheme on his outfit, different color scheme on the blast effects, and of course, McFarland Platinum Edition sticker. Same barcode as a regular one. So with no further ado, let's open them up. Alright, now that these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Each one has a display stand, collector's card, two energy effects, and then a total of three different faces. Before I tailor all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Geoforce. His real name is Brian Markov. He's the younger prince twin of Markovia, he underwent some experiments trying to turn humans into metahumans. He ended up with a lot of different powers. He helped Batman take down some super criminal and then went back to America and joined the Outsiders. He was one of the founding members of the Outsiders and actually after Batman left the Outsiders, he was leader for a brief period of time. So Geoforce has a lot of powers. He has a connection to the Geoforce. He has superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and durability. He has earth manipulation, lava manipulation, heat manipulation, gravity manipulation, regenerative healing, geo-positional tracking, expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and a skilled strategist and tactician. He sounds like a freaking badass. Sounds like he's a really powerful hero, but he's one of the sort of lesser-known characters in the DC Universe. The original roster of the Outsiders would be Geoforce, Katana, Black Lightning, Metamorpho, Halo, later they added Looker, and then Batman took over the team. Modern Outsiders consists of Batwoman, Batwing, Katana, Black Lightning, The Signal. They've undergone many changes throughout the years, and I hope they give us the whole original team. The orange and red version of Geoforce is his later suit. The green and yellow is his original suit. They're done with the speeding bullet Superman body. So let's take a look. Starting with his face here, it is hideous. He's angry, screaming, I get it, but why would you pick that to be the face that you display the figure on? He looks like he's a villain, he's evil, but he is not. Hair looks good, sort of flowing in the wind. He's got the big mask over his face. Looks like he has some white lenses and eyes and that screaming face, and I can't wait to switch it to a regular face. GF, Geoforce, not gluten-free. I recognize that stupid texturing up and down the entire body for the speeding bullet Superman and it's been used a few times since. Pretty cool looking belt, some little forearm armor, top of his boots, gold trim, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. As a whole he looks good but I don't believe he had anything like this on the suit in the comics. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt which I do think is very well done. The hair, the sculpt, the paint job, it's all there. I just think the hideous screaming face needs to go. But like I said, looks good, especially the hair. And there's a time and a place for a face like this. And a closer look at the Platinum's face and head sculpt. Hair's a little bit different. Face is the same screaming face, but of course a different color costume. And then, here are the figures, broken down as far as they can go, with all of their removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. 
Here's his display stand. Typical McFarland display stand we've seen countless times before, except this one has a silver DC at the bottom because it's part of the collector's line. And then we have his collector's card, as you can see. It's Geoforce. McFarland Collector's Edition. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. Now let's look at his faces. He has three of them. One with a screaming expression, one with a normal expression, and one with a smiling expression. Here's a look at his first face. This one has the screaming expression. Here's his second face. This one has the normal expression, and this will definitely be the face I use most of the time on this figure. And here's his third face. This one has the smiling expression. And if you're curious how he looks without any face at all, here it is. He has two holes. And then I don't know why he has that little sculpted thing at the bottom there. It seems to serve no purpose at all. Now it is kind of difficult to get the face under his hair and slide up and get the little peg to fit into that hole properly. But it makes the face sit in there very snug and tight. In addition to that, when you have the faces on, it's very seamless. There's no gap exposed at all like some of the other figures. So very nicely done. Now let's look at his energy effects. They're cast out of semi-transparent plastic. The regular release, the orange version of Geoforce, comes with the orange energy effects, and the green version, the purple effects. Now the effects are not exactly the same. They're slightly different sculpt. You can see on the end there, one's a lot thinner than the other. Cast in a semi-transparent plastic, and they fit over his arms. Here's a look at Geoforce, utilizing those energy effects. Now I want to check out the differences and similarities between the standard release of Geoforce and the Platinum Chase. Besides the obvious paint differences, it's 100% the same figure, same sculpt, same articulation, so let's take a look. So with their heads, their hair is a different color, sculpted very nicely. The mask is also a different color. This guy is red, this guy's yellow, and this guy's green, this guy's orange. But you can see the outfit's done a little bit differently, it comes down in sort of a point. GF in a circle with green, and his is GF, sort of in a circle with the regular suit. The belt is significantly better on the Planet version, has this little bullseye type of thing, and his is totally blank. Gold versus sort of yellow. And now to check out the differences, similarities, and reuse between Geoforce and the Speeding Bolts Batman. So obviously the heads are totally different. Batman here has this extra piece sort of attached to the chest. His chest is totally smooth, but it's the same torso and stomach. The same arms until you get down to the forearms here. And he has this extra wrist piece. Batman has the glove and fins. You can see the textured lines going up and down the arms, as well as the legs. The diaper is a little bit different, or at least he has a different belt. I think it's the same diaper. The legs are the same, even the boots. So these guys are 100% the same figure, different head. Obviously Batman has a cape, different forearms, different belt, bat symbol on the chest, different paint job. Here are all the figures that utilize the Speeding Bullets body. We have a total of seven so far, and I'm sure they're just getting started. It's a great body. I wish it would just smooth that texture part on the arms and legs. It would really elevate this and allow him to use it for a ton of different reasons. Honestly, beyond the actual Speeding Bullets Batman, that is inaccurate on every single one of the other six figures. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure and his accessories, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 7.1 inches tall, which can translate to around 18 centimeters. And for his articulation, starting with his head, of course, you can rotate side to side. He can look up and down a pretty good amount. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders and a ball joint goes out more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that, double jointed elbows, his wrist can rotate and it's hinged as well. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion. Legs completely does the splits, McFarland style hip joints. Rotations minimal on him. Legs go forward about that far, a little bit more to the sides. Back, not at all. Double jointed knees and his ankle forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, toe articulation. 
Here's like a geoforce coming through some rubble. Just did a bunch of earth manipulation. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other geoforce and outsiders figures. Here's the McFarlane geoforce figures. Next to the DC Direct geoforce. I believe this is the only other company that's made a geoforce figure. And here they are. Next to Mattel DC Universe Classics Metamorpho. Another member of the original Outsiders team. And this is more or less his traditional classic look. Then, next to Mattel DC Multiverse Katana. This in her more modern Rebirth look. I would love a someone to make a classic Katana. No one has ever made one before. I really want them to make the entire classic Outsiders team. And now, with the McFarlane Black Lightning figure. This is a more modern version. They would need a classic one to go with the classic team. Happy to have this modern one. And here, next to a Nightfall Batman. Even though this is a 90s Batman, this is the same way he looked in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. And this would be a great Batman figure to lead the classic Batman and the Outsiders team. So here's the McFarlane Collector's Edition Wave 1. Every single Collector's Edition figure has a Platinum Chase variant. Here are both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of the first appearance Superman, the Abyss, and Alan Scott Green Lantern. And here's the second wave of Collector's Edition figures. Both regular and platinum versions of Firestorm, Hawkman, and Sinestro. Then, the third wave of Collector's Edition figures. We have the Death and Return of Superman, Captain Carrot, Batman as Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman. Here's the fourth wave. This wave consisted of Penguin, Starfire, and Captain Boomerang. And here's the fifth wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures. Both the regular and platinum chase variants of Sergeant Rock, Connor Kent Superboy, and Manga Batman. Here's the sixth wave of Collector's Edition figures. Both versions of the Red Hood, Clock King and Dr. Time, Ragman, and Agent Liberty. And finally, here's the seventh wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures. Both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of The Dark Knight Returns Batman, Huntress, and some Green Lantern Corps members. We have Tomar Ray, Evan Sewer, Arcus Chumuk, and the Green Man. And here are the Collector's Edition figures I have from Series 8. I have a total of six of them so far. That is half of the figures they're making from Series 8. Both the regular and Platinum versions of Grid and Geoforce, the regular Lightning Lad, and the Platinum version of Simon Boz. I still need the Platinum Lightning Lag, the regular Simon Boz, but I believe I have the two of those on the way. And then I need both the regular and Platinum version of Chris Reeve's Superman, and the regular and Platinum versions of Mr. Terrific. And then Series 9 of the Collector's Wave consists of Supergirl, Guy Gardner Green Lantern, and then Series 9 of the Collector's Wave consists of Power Girl, Guy Gardner, and Captain Cold. And since this Cyborg Superman is a Platinum Chase variant, I wanted to take a look at all the different McFarland DC Multiverse Platinum Chase variants out there. Here are all the sort of older Platinum Chase variants. Gold, Bronze, Unpainted, and then some newer versions. And here are all the more modern McFarland DC Multiverse Platinum figures. I'm getting close to fully caught up. Here are the Platinum figures on my wet list right now. Platinum Collector's Edition Christopher Reeve Superman. Platinum Collector's Edition Mr. Terrific. Two digital Black Tux Joker figures. One Speed Force Flash Platinum figure. Two Platinum Batman vs. Superman Armored Batman figures. Two Batman vs. Superman Superman Platinum figures. Two 1966 Clock King figures. Two of the Hasbro Homage Blue Batman Beyond figures. And if I had all those, I'd be caught up with everything that's out right now. At least for about two days till McFarland puts some more out. If anybody has a lead and we're able to get some of those for a reasonable price or can possibly help me out, please drop me a line in the comments below. It is much appreciated. Now let's check them out. Next is some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are, next to some McFarland Toy Store exclusive figures, both the regular and planet versions of Jonah Hex, and then the Nightmare Vampire Batman. Here are these Geoforce figures, next to the Amazon exclusive Arkham City Detective Mode Batman vs. Solomon Grundy 2-pack, and here they are, next to the Shazam and Freddie Freeman 2-pack. This was also an Amazon exclusive. Then, next to the third wave of digital figures, Silver Age Joker and Earth 2 Robin, and now, with some Walmart exclusive gold label figures, 
Action Comics Superman, and Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Here are these Geoforce figures. Next to an Arkham Asylum, Glow in the Dark Killer Croc, who is also an Amazon exclusive. And here they are. Next to some other recent Target exclusive figures, Commander Steel and Sinestro in Parallax Armor. Then, next to the latest Jokerized offerings, Hush, Harley Quinn, and the last Lantern Earth Batman. And now, with the most recent Page Puncher Wave, both the regular and Planet of Chase variants of the Rebirth Deathstroke and the Damian Wayne Robin. And finally, with the most recent Platinum Wave, the Question, Shiny Knight, and Effigy. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise. In case you'll know which lines you can mix them with, since they're McFarland toys, they're typically the seven-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check them out with some of the McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all seven-inch scale. And now, with some Jack-specific wrestling figures and some Diamond Select toys, here they are next to a box of Christmas lights. And here they are, with some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazz Warriors wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH figure arts and Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, these are some cool Geoforce figures. I'm more familiar with the orange and red look, although I'm quite familiar with his classic look as well, but he changed his costume a long, long time ago. I think the head sculpt looks really good. Once you get rid of that screaming face, the hair is excellent, the face looks good, paint job's on point. Then the body's a really good body, but my god, smooth those goddamn arms and legs out. That looks so bad with that stupid texture thing, which is inaccurate to six of the seven figures they put it on. If you're going to use a generic body like this, or Blue Beetle or whatever, make sure it's a generic body and doesn't have signature sculpted lines up and down their arms and legs. That is so annoying when it's not accurate to 90-some percent of the figures that you're putting it on. It's okay to alter the sculpt a little and smooth that out. Or put some different arms and legs on him. I do like the figure. His accessories... They're okay, they don't fit on the hands quite as nicely as I'd like. I mean, they do fit on there and they're secure, but it looks a little off. If I were to rate this guy, I'd probably give him like a 6.5 out of 10. Man, probably a 6. He looks good, I like him. I don't like that stupid thing on his arms and legs. Beyond that, the reuse is fine. Paint job's good. I'm really happy to start the Outsiders team. My god, McFarland, please finish it. There are many teams you guys have started and never went back and revisited. It's a solid release, but like I said, I almost don't want Geoforce if he's going to be the only member of the Outsiders that they give us. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action video reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.